I want to move into uh, some of the stuff that you're doing now and hear what we have coming. And speaking of Oxford, there's the St. Giles Fair every September. Yeah. And I think there's a um, love-hate relationship, sometimes more hate than love among certain people. I don't think C.S. Lewis spoke very highly of the St. <laughs> Giles Fair. But for our listeners who haven't, we, we take a group uh, for a summer program to Oxford, and I get to visit Oxford a good bit uh, in our summer break. So I'm kind of familiar with the uh, town and are uh, very familiar with the town and the pubs a little too much, sort of a joke. Uh, but the St. Giles Fair comes in every September, and it is, it is for the people. And, it, and, and people come in from outside. And so it is not the Oxford of uh, people's imagination where you have all of these scholars walking around and so forth. And uh, C.S. Lewis, of course, didn't like it uh, so much. He thought it was a little too dirty for him, a little uh, infradig. And it is, it is, <laughs> it has everything. And you are working on fairgrounds in Shakespeare. And I wondered if maybe St. Giles wasn't somewhere in the back of your mind or similar type things that we still have. Yes, yes, in a way, because St. Giles is one of the noble old fairs. Stratford-on-Avon has one mop fair. Cambridge has one Sturbridge fair. And they're all actually the same fairground, essentially, that rotates around the country, London and around the country. And this happened precisely in Shakespeare's time. You know, a fair is annual and doesn't last very long, a week maximum. But um, it's recurring and annual, but the fairground people are all rotating together. So there's a kind of city without a location or a town of fairground that reappears in different configurations in different places. And, and yet in Shakespeare's time, it was extremely organized. It had its own legal structure. So I was very interested in a place that wasn't geographic, which actually meant that more people could experience it. And in fact, in that way, it's rather like theatre because the theatre people would leave London and go and tour a progress through the country. And they would actually follow roughly the same route as the fairgrounds. So actually at different times, people are experiencing the theatre and experiencing the fair. And I came to be interested in the rather close connections between theatre and fair because actually what they're selling is entertainment rather than a thing very often. You know, they're selling a bit of a thing. They are selling some drink and some food, but mostly what you take away and what you pay for is an experience. And when I started researching it, it turned out that in London, when they had the big annual fairs in London, they would close the theatres and the theatres would become like youth hostels, bedding down places. People could stay in the theatres, could sleep over in order to go to the fair. And you start realising they won't compete for the same people. Instead, they'll help one another. So you were talking about how sort of low culture St Giles Fair is and, and sort of not the grand, beautiful Oxford. And I suppose I was interested in oh, we keep thinking of theatre because of Shakespeare as very noble high culture, fairground as sort of low culture. But if they're competing for the same audience and they're going for the same to the same places, are they more similar than we had thought? 